Let's move on now to our next talk uh, by Jan Muslikli and Marcin Wagiel on uh, driving a terminal internal, internal recursion in numerical expressions. All yours. Chris, could you make me a host? Or am I already a host? Oh yeah, I can do that. Okay, that's that's fine. <clears throat> okay. Uh, good. Can you see everything? It's fine. Uh, okay. There's so, a link to the slides <clears throat> in the chat. Yeah. So okay. Thank you. Thank you for getting us. Uh, well, let's say in Japan, uh, what we're going to uh, show you today is a novel finding from numerical expressions and uh, concerning just uh, one of the founding ideas of gener generative enterprise, namely recursion. So um, just to, get, to sketch the problem, uh, it's been widely known that recursion uh, was the key idea lying behind the generative enterprise. And of course, the problem was that of generating infinite set of sentences from finite devices. So if you take just a very simple lexicon, like I use say smart, <clears throat> it's been a, a puzzle why we can generate um, an infinite and interpretable sentence uh, just uh, making use of this finite uh, resource. And of course the well-known answer was that uh, what's responsible for this is the recursive syntactic engine. <clears throat> now, this gave rise to, to, the, to the tacit assumption that uh, recursion uh, is uh, well, recursion lies in syntax alone. But actually, if, you, if we move back to, to, the, uh, to the beginning of, of generative grammar, this is not that clear. What is definitely the case is that recursion was defined in terms of rules application, like in the in 1960, uh, where Chomsky and Hale <coughs> state that the same rules are reapplied to each constituent in a repeating cycle and in the, until the highest constituent is reached. But there is um, nothing said about the type of those rules. Now, <clears throat> another suggestion might be that uh, there are other types of recursion, but they are definable in terms of syntactic recursion, like in 2007, where Chomsky states that merge falls within UG as one of the organizing principles of recursive generation of expressions. Uh, nevertheless, there is also an, uh, let's say, uh, alternative view uh, expressed in 2016, or at least suggested in 2016, <clears throat> where Chomsky states that natural language has uh, syntax, which is responsible for internal symbol manipulation and pragmatics, and formal syntax, including model theoretic semantics, falls under syntax in this categorization. So we might like think that we, 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 we could model uh, two types of recursion, uh, both be, being uh, like emerging from the internal symbol manipulation, one being syntactic in the narrow sense, and another being syntactic in a broader sense, which, which means semantic. But then the question that arises is whether this semantic uh, recursion is autonomous, uh, is autonomous, meaning that it is required independently from the structure building mechanism. And today we're going to argue that the answer is in the affirmative. So we're going <coughs> to... Um, defend the view that uh, semantics does involve recursion independently from merge that is within terminals. And moreover, that this is required as the only way uh, saving the computation from the emergence of unbound and unrestricted variables, that means collapse. So now Martin will um, give you some data. Uh, yes, so, um... So uh, in uh, recent work on numerical expressions such as double and two time, uh, it has been observed that they uh, these guys show non-trivial quantificational effects. So though uh, they involve uh, numeric quantification, which means that at some level um, they refer to a number, uh, they show significant difference compared to cardinals in that they do not seem to count individuals in the extension of the modified uh, noun. So if you look at 
uh, 1A are two champions. So this phrase would be true of uh, two uh, individuals or a pair of individuals that have the property of being uh, a champion. However, if you compare it with uh, expressions such as two-time champion or double champion, it's not the case that these expressions would be true of two uh, in individuals. They seem to quantify over something else. And it's something that is not, uh, you know, uh, does, is not uh, the building blocks of the extension of, of, of the noun. And the fact that uh, there's no polarization of, of, of such uh, building blocks uh, involved uh, is corroborated by two. So you can add a cardinal, so you can say three two-time champions or three double champions and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, 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 in a recent analysis, I argue that uh, numerical expressions uh, like double and two time are subatomic quantifiers. So uh, this means that they access domains hidden with this, within the semantics of the NP, and they target certain components of those hidden uh, hidden domains. And in particular, uh, double uh, counts entities linked to an implicit argument associated. Uh, uh, with the with the noun, uh, whereas two time uh, counts uh, events of acquiring a property. So to illustrate, let's have a look at three from three A. Kim is a double champion. It follows that. Kim is a champion in two disciplines, right? So discipline being this implicit argument because being a champion implies being a champion in a particular discipline. Uh, however, from 3A, does, it does not follow that Kim became a champion in one discipline twice, where here we would have uh, this event of, uh, of acquiring a champion property. Uh, on the other hand, that's exactly what happens in 4. So uh, Kim is a two-time champion, does not entail that Kim is a champion in two disciplines, but rather it implies that Kim became a champion in one discipline twice. So here we have this quantification over, uh, over uh, events of, of becoming a champion. Yeah, and uh, what we are going to focus today are a Polish and Japanese equivalents of double and two time, which are nice because they are morphologically complex and transparent. So if you look at five, uh, five a, we have podwójny double. Uh, so we have this uh, dw root, which is the numeric root for two, and we have some additional morphology that uh, makes uh, you know, so like uh, you know, it's like we can uh, translate this expression as double uh, in two time. We have the same thing. So DW, this is two, and some additional morphology. So this is two time. Uh, a different strategy is employed by uh, Japanese uh, in six. Uh, what we see in uh, Niju and Nido uh, is that we have the bar uh, numeral root, uh, which is uh, followed by uh, by uh, by a different classifier. So do would be a classifier for layers. So so the the whole thing would. Two time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so what we're going to present, so the data we're going to present uh, is based on a generalization that uh, uh, that we reached by looking at two so uh, data sources. So the first one is the National Corpus of Polish, which is a representative uh, corpus of this language. And we complemented the corpus study with a number of Google queries. So what we're going to present uh, from Japanese uh, comes from the uh, Deiji Taru Daijisen uh, Dictionary, which is a comprehensive Japanese uh, dictionary, and we accepted uh, uh, the data from uh, definitions and examples in the lexical entries. Right. So the, the, the crucial uh, empirical uh, contribution for, of this talk is the novel observation that we have this cross-linguistic ambiguity or perhaps uh, under specification uh, that we refer to as the non-recursive recursive distinction. So uh, in seven, uh, we have a phrase, niju uh, kaze, uh, so uh, to, to uh, double taxation, let's say. And this uh, phrase could be uh, understood in two ways. The first one is the non-recursive way. In this uh, understanding, uh, so imagine you have uh, 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 an income of $100, and there are two independent uh, taxation events, uh, and the tax is 10%. So the first tax, for example, by two different countries. Uh, so the first tax would apply to the <coughs> 
original uh, amount of money, one hundred dollars, so and you are expected to pay uh, ten dollars. And the second event also applies to the uh, to the original amount of money, so one hundred dollars. So what you get is that the total uh, tax you need to pay pay is uh, uh, twenty dollars. So this there's one uh, understanding, but there's also another understanding that we will refer to as the uh, recursive in, uh, understanding. And in this case, what happens is that the output of the first taxation uh, event serves as the input for the second taxation event. So we would need to imagine a situation that you pay 10% from your $100, so that, which is uh, $10, and then you pay another tax from the already taxed income. So uh, in this case, this would be 10% uh, of $90. So in the end, the total amount of tax would uh, amount to $90. <laughs> So, so you have two different understandings. And this is very similar in eight, dvukrotny wzrost cen, so two time rise price, so double price rise, something like that. Uh, also here, uh, we would have either two independent events of rising, um, or rising prices by say some fixed amount, uh, and uh, also the recursive uh, reading in which the uh, first, uh, uh, the, the increased price, the, the price increased in the first uh, uh, price rise event would serve as the input for the second uh, uh, pri uh, price rise, okay? Uh, so this is something that uh, looks a little bit like, you know, <coughs> armchair linguistics, uh, but we're going to convince you that this is ha actually something, you know, it's like you find in uh, how people use uh, the language uh, in everyday use, right? So here's an example from, from the internet. So I will only re read the English translation. Uh, so we, we see this dvukratna podwyżka cen, two time increase uh, price. So students often use an analogous rule to calculate percentages. And yet, a double price increase by 10% is not the same as a single increase by uh, 20%. So what this, uh, what this uh, sentence illustrates is exactly the point that we've, um, uh, that we've uh, the recursive meaning of the, of the phrase that we've uh, discussed uh, uh, a minute ago. Okay. So another, uh, another example um, is uh, from a sports commentary. So far, will we draw them happy and record breaking? Moreover, with the double record record breaking, the former record, of course. So what here, what is meant here is that there was some sports event and there was an old record that was beaten during that sports event and a new record was set. And during the very same sports uh, meeting, another, uh, this new record was also beaten. So we have uh, a new record that is better than the, uh, than the original one and better than the second uh, record that was established during that sports event. So again, we have this, this recursive uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is double emphasis, first color, second bold face. So this the, here, the text is first emphasized with color, and then the emphasized text is again emphasized in addition with bold face. Okay. And here we have uh, an example uh, due to all translators. Some uh, play that game of double translation in this case, in this case, from English to Polish, from Polish to Spanish. But doesn't it pose the risk of making double the amount of errors? So here, the original text was translated into uh, uh, into Polish as the source text, and this translation serves as the input of the second translation. Uh, so uh, we ended up with uh, with a Spanish text, but it was but the text was not uh, translated from the English original, but from the intermediating Polish uh, translation. Okay. So, uh, so in what we've saw, what we saw, uh, uh, we had uh, examples of this kind of iterative application of an uh, of a of an event of some action, right? So we had this eventive uh, uh, recursive understanding. But uh, let me let us emphasize that there are also cases of static uh, recursive uh, cases. Uh, so here's an um, an a historical example. Uh, so Mieszko is, uh, was a, a medieval Polish ruler. So at the beginning of Mieszko's reign, Poland was Czechia's vassal, whereas Czechia was the emperor's vassal. This double dependency was very disadvantageous. So what we have here, we have, it's not the case that 
Poland was uh, uh, dependent uh, from two uh, um, from two entities in an independent way. Rather, what we have is that Pola, Poland was dependent from Czechia, uh, but because of the fact that Czechia was dependent from the emperor, by recursion, uh, Poland was also dependent from the uh, 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 emperor. And this is evidence from counterfactuality. So had Czechia uh, stopped being the, the emperor's uh, vassal, so would have Poland, okay? Um, right? Um, and there are also, you can also find, uh, you can also find expressions that are uh, unambiguous and they only license the uh, recursive interpretations. Mm, this is perhaps due to purely conceptual reasons, but one example is from, from, from logic, uh, so double negation. So the only way to understand uh, what double uh, negation is, is that you basically negate a negated uh, sentence. That's, that's the recursive understanding. We could conceptually come up with with an, uh, with an interpretation that you have a sentence and the sentence has two parts and each of the parts is negated. So that would be a non-recursive understanding, but this is not how we, how we, how we, how we interpret the phrase. And uh, we don't need logic to get such, an, uh, such a reading. So in 15, we have Nido Age, so double uh, deep fry, so two time deep fry. So again, this is something when you have, uh, we, when you have some, some food and you fry, deep fry it and what's being deep fried is deep fried again. And it's not the case that you have a thing uh, that has two parts and you fry one part and then another part, which would be a non-recursive uh, understanding, okay? <laughs> So, uh, some uh, other examples like that extracted from um, from the Japanese um, dictionary. So, niju ori, uh, so double sale. This is a situation when one sells a commodity that has already been sold to someone else. And niju uh, teito, uh, so a double mortgage when one uh, raises a mortgage on a property that already has a mortgage on it. Mm -hmm. So to uh, to generalize, uh, so we hope we convince you that recursive readings are real. Uh, are, admittedly, they are rare, but they're a real thing in everyday uh, use. And they typically arise in technical terms. Uh, what is of great importance here is that there's no formal distinction between the non-recursive and recursive uh, reading. Uh, so even in a language such as Japanese uh, with lots of classifiers, when you would expect that maybe there's a dedicated classifier, but that's not the case. So it suggests that there's some kind of underspecification rather than ambiguity involved. And one uh, last point is that if you look at uh, the child's uh, corpus, which is a repository for data of first language acquisition, there are no attestive recursive examples with double and two times. So this suggests that uh, such examples are cognitively or more generally computa computation-wise costly. And now uh, Jan continues. Okay, <clears throat> so why is we now that uh, numericals do involve something like a recursive interpretation, <clears throat> there are at least two problems that should be addressed. And the first one is whether we are really dealing with recursion or maybe this is just iteration. And another is <clears throat> how we can explain the uh, not innocent fact that there seem to be recursion within the lexicon, so without uh, syntax. So let's address them <coughs> one by one. Well, first of all, Discriminating recursion from iteration uh, was addressed in a very interesting way by Jan Wouter Zwart uh, 10 years ago, and it was illustrated um, by a cartoon. So take Calvin <coughs> and uh, his duplicates. And the question is whether those duplicates were uh, derived, well, well de delivered in a recursive way. Well, the answer is not necessarily. So we can think of at least two ways uh, in which this state of affairs could be achieved. So the first one is iterative, is the iterative one. So <clears throat> uh, the procedure goes as follows. So in step one, take Calvin and form a singleton set, right? And then in step two, take this initial Calvin, duplicate him in step two and form a doubleton set, right? So we have C1 and C2, or which is one and the same, C1 and his duplicate. Okay, now, and this is crucial. In step three, take again this initial Calvin, right? This guy, and make another duplicate. So just iterate the initial operation. So you get 
the third duplicate of Calvin, and you have a three element set. So Calvin, his duplicate, and yet another duplicate of Calvin. <clears throat> but this is not the only way. You can also achieve the state of a first by means of recursion, and the procedure is entirely different. So you take in step one Calvin, that's fine, you form a singleton. Then you duplicate him, the initial Calvin, and form a doubleton set, fine. And here is the crucial point. You don't take the initial Calvin right here, but you take the duplicate of Calvin, which is the first duplicate here. You take this first duplicate and duplicate this duplicate in step number three. So you get the three element set. Now, the important point is that the output is one and the same. So you have one and the same set. The difference lies in the procedure. So here you have Calvin, his duplicate, and his another duplicate. Here you have Calvin, his duplicate, and the duplicate of the duplicate of Calvin. And this is exactly what holds, <coughs> um, um, according to Zwart, uh, in the case of language, where he says that we cannot decide that the language is recursive by simply looking at its structure. We have to know about the procedure by which these structures are derived. So <coughs> just to give you uh, a clearer picture. So it's been often mixed that iteration and recursion are uh, a little like close because for recursion it's enough if you take the output of the first operation as an input of another. No, that's not the case. So iteration is just repeating the same operation. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this simply means that you uh, take phi of x giving y, and you can still use this y as an input for another oper operation. This does not mean that it is recursive. You're just iterating one and the same operation. <coughs> to get recursion, you need self-call. So you take phi of x giving y, and then you not take y, but phi of phi of x, you take this whole uh, thing to uh, get the recursive step giving z, and then take again this whole procedure as an argument. So you get phi of phi of phi of x and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> it's more about procedure than just of infinite use of finite means. And the question that arises is, is it just a matter of procedure or rather do we have interpretation related differences following from this? And uh, uh, we think that there are good arguments for uh, the affirmative answer and the um, uh, proof comes from quotation. Quotation is a funny uh, <coughs> effect because it's <coughs> in, it, it gives you two interpretations. So uh, on the one hand, quoted expressions can be interpreted as purely material strings of symbols. So you don't, need to understand the meaning of quoted expression to get the meaning of the whole quotation. So we can say that dog has three letters and treating quotes as letters or can be characters or whatever. whatever. You can, we can say that quoted quoted dog has five letters and then quoted 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 dog has seven letters and so on and so forth. <coughs> but we can also interpret this in a, a recursive way uh, that is in terms of uh, names of expressions. So we can say that dog is a noun, but then quoted, quoted dog is a name of a noun and quoted, quoted, quoted dog is a name of a name of a noun, which is an entirely different procedure. In the first case, we have the iterative reading. So we have no procedural structure that would be revealed in the interpretation. Rather, we have a flat output structure and only what, the only thing we can get here is that we have at most uh, structural inter iteration, but this is definable in, in terms of flat structure. This is um, not the case in, uh, for, for recursive reading. Here we have the procedural structure that reveals the embedding of naming relation. And the structure building itself increases the embedding depth. So this is the, the, the uh, crucial element of recursion. <clears throat> now, to show you that this is not just a, a matter of, of technical uh, <coughs> approach. Uh, we have a, a real life example uh, taken from the internet in Polish, uh, which is uh, a di di double quotation. Uh, and uh, what's the story? The story is that here the author uh, points out that he is not quoting directly from the source, but he's quoting a quoted thing. So he says something like this. According to her, a word time is, and here comes quotation, but he adds a comment. Here I use double quotation because the encyclopedia published by PWN quotes in this part constitution of the IMT. So he quotes the constitution, but 
uh, he quotes this as quoted in the encyclopedia. So he quotes a quoted thing and he uh, flashes this out in the comments. So it is uh, clear and he calls this double quotation. So it's clearly uh, <clears throat> the fleshing out the, the, the recursive uh, procedure. Now let's move to the second point, namely, uh, do we have the effect of recursion uh, taking place word internally? That means uh, being a property of words and this would mean that it's determined by the lexicon. Well, <clears throat> this is not innocent because we know that uh, linguistic recursion is in general connected to derivation. And we know this from two pieces of evidence. First of all, first, first of all we know that all standardly recognized types of uh, linguistic recursion are attested in syntax, but not at the word level, so out the opposite. Uh, and moreover, we know that even if we have a recursion uh, in, in uh, morphology, in, in languages with, with rich morphology, even if it's attested the word level, there are two problems. First of all, even if it is morphology, it's not uh, in and of itself a proof that there is a lack of merge there. And moreover, we know that it is much more constrained from the point of view of both structure and semantics. So uh, this would not be innocent to say uh, <clears throat> that is, but on the other hand, we have also some reasons to uh, push this um, uh, direction. Namely, first of all, merge as such does not give rise to recursion uh, on the interpretation side. So merge can involve recursive, iterative, and entirely non-repetitive interpretations. Moreover, it's uh, been a, a old problem. It appears, although in syntactic structures and reappeared in the minimalist program era, that uh, there is some kind of overlap. So we have some crucial grammatical properties that are encoded both in the lexicon and in the structure. <clears throat> so this uh, pushed Coster uh, 12 years ago to uh, Propose something like that Culture, culturally invented, not biologically given words are the primary carriers of linguistic functionality. And linguistics is the study of the unique technology imparted by our words. Recursion is a case in point. So <coughs> if we take uh, this point of view I, I mentioned uh, at the beginning, namely that we can think of some wider kind of syntax, namely the one in, responsible for internal symbol manipulation and then covering also formal semantics. We might think of recursion being not a property of merge as such, but as a property of some symbolic configurations, right? And then we might think of this configuration being, uh, so, so this configuration giving rise to recursion that is derived, so then we could think of syntactic recursion in the narrow sense, or simply involved by the properties of a terminal. And then we could think of <coughs> semantic recursion that is syntactic recursion in a broad sense. So to sum up, uh, what, we, uh, what we have shown uh, so far is that we do have recursion in numerical expressions, not just iteration, and we can see it by, from the embedding depth and formal explainable and empirical artistic different interpretations. We might think of it as being a property of symbolic configurations, so it would be involved by the properties of terminals and not derived in the course of, of uh, structural building. And the problem that arises here is uh, whether it is really a uh, recursion that is at stake here, if the recursive interpretation is just equivalent to the one uh, we can get from iteration, not recursion. But we're gonna show you that recursion is needed because it saves the computation from the emergence of unbounded unrestricted variables and the iteration would not be in a position to do that. So let's um, now move to the proposal. Yeah. So, uh, so, 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 as our as as the background, we take a recent analysis uh, of double and two type by, by myself, and um, and in the uh, in this analysis, um, double and two time are taken are argued to be some atomic quantifiers. So, meaning that they access domains hidden within the semantics of the modified noun, and in particular, uh, double uh, is assumed to count essential parts of an entity if or a role, so what those essential parts are will be explained uh, uh, in a minute. Uh, whereas two time counts are becoming events, so events of uh, acquiring a property. 
So this analysis seems to capture uh, neatly uh, non-recursive interpretations, uh, but it fails to distinguish uh, between non-recursive and recursive readings. Uh, so we would like to uh, uh, elaborate on that and 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 and, and enhance it. Uh, but it's still a good starting point to to look at uh, at the uh, at double and two time. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are a number of assumptions uh, we make. So first of all, we take counting to be performed via Krivkian measure functions. We also assume an, uh, extended, uh, an extended ontology of the model. Uh, so uh, we assume roles, which are uh, objects of the type R in the domain of roles. Uh, so you can think of roles as social constructs or um, proper uh, so functions or capacities of individuals that are nonetheless independent of their bearers. Uh, so if you look at a class noun such as man, uh, so this is be as usual assumed as a property of individuals. Uh, on the other hand, uh, role nouns such as judge would be a property of role. So this is this R uh, there. And of course, uh, because uh, individuals uh, usually uh, play, perform roles, there is also a special operation play uh, proposed by Tobel uh, that relates roles and individuals whenever necessary. Okay. Uh, so we will use the following uh, variables uh, in our approach. So theta ranges over thematic roles, and tau and tau prime range over the primitive types E uh, for individuals, V for events, and R for roles. Okay, so now um, let's have a look at what we uh, what we uh, propose based uh, based on uh, on von Gil 2021. So we uh, so we assume the operator BC for become, which relates an individual with a becoming eventuality. So this becoming eventuality is, for example, an act of acquiring a particular social role, but it could be an act of acquiring some particular property in general. Uh, we also uh, assume that you can uh, count such uh, uh, eventualities via the measure function hashtag BC. Uh, so this is this is done for quantification, it is defined in 20. Uh, so what 20 says is basically that you would uh, get number one when you apply this uh, operation to an object that is a discrete building block in the extension of P. So we leave it uh, undiscussed that it usually it would be atoms, but we don't want to commit ourselves to the atomic uh, the atomic view, but something that is, that is the building block uh, in the extension of P, okay? So, um, as for uh, essential parts, we take it to be an underspecified notion, and uh, you can have different uh, essential parts uh, depending on, uh, based on different conceptualization under different circumstances, and it is defined in 21, so this essential part um, Operator is true of a part of an object X of type tau, so either uh, an uh, entity, event, or a role in the extension of P that is conceived of as essential for an ascription of P to X in the context C. Right. So this must this needs to be something that is that is very relevant, very important for 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 for, for a given property. And of course, you can count essential parts. So for this, we use a different measure function, the box plus uh, P uh, measure function. Uh, which is again defined in 22. And what you see is basically what 22 says is that when you apply this measure function uh, to uh, to an um, discrete building block in the, the extension of P, you would get the number of uh, of essential parts of of of, of an entity uh, of that uh, discrete building block. Okay. Right. So uh, let's have a look at the core semantics we propose for double and two time. So just to remind, double counts essential parts of a uh, discrete entity, event, or role. So for example, it would count disciplines to which a champion role applies, right? So discipline being uh, this implicit argument, this essential part of the champion role. So in 24, what we see is that uh, double champion denotes a uh, function from roles to truth values, uh, such that it would yield true if the relevant role is uh, as a champion role, and there are two essential parts of that champion role. 
So this is what, uh, what it would mean. And of course, then you can shift it to individuals if needed. On the other hand, two time counts becoming eventualities. So in this case, in the champion example, it would be events of acquiring a champion role, right? So in 26, we have the denotation of two time champion. And what we see there is that we have a, a becoming event. Uh, so that relates the role. Uh, so in which uh, the individual is a beneficiary of that becoming event. So in other words, an individual X in the event E uh, uh, acquires uh, the role uh, R, R, and this is a champion role, and there are two such uh, and there are two such uh, becoming events. So that's that's the semantics in twenty six. Okay, and now uh, Jan will tell you how we extend it to um, to uh, recursive interpretations. Okay, so moving to the recursive interpretation, what we have right now in a nutshell is. <clears throat> Two uh, measure functions, one delivering to essential parts, another delivering to eventualities. And this, in and of itself, it's not at odds with the recursive reading, of course, but the problem is that it is too coarse grained, right? So if you take double taxation, what follows is that in, in, in this approach, that you have two essential parts of general taxation, which is true, <clears throat> but you cannot say uh, just having this, whether these are uh, these actions of taxations were applied to the initial sum of money or whether you have one taxation apply, uh, applied to the output of the first um, operation. And the same for two time price increase, right? What we know is that we have two independent events of increasing the price, but we don't know whether the two events of increasing the price were independent from each other, <clears throat> like within two years and with the gap between them, or we have one increase applied to the output of the first one. So they, are, they depend on each other. So what seems to be the case is that we don't, we need not just plurality of parts of events, but also some, some specification of the input of uh, the computation. <clears throat> now, what we're gonna propose is to do that uh, through dependent types. And uh, the simple reason is as follows. So we have a good few reasons for thinking that this input specification is not an issue. So <clears throat> um, proof very simple comes from uh, negation. So if you try to negate is that this is not double taxation, you can't get the reason that it is not a recursive taxation, right? So rather than encoding is in it, you know, truth conditions or the con content part responsible for truth conditions, <coughs> we would uh, rather see it as uh, being encoded in the assumed or presupposed um, piece of information. So uh, we uh, propose to take this as uh, input specification being encoded as a dependent type, meaning something like it must be assumed about parts or events quantified over by numerals. So uh, this is something uh, really matching the, the at least one direction in, in um, developing dependent types. So uh, we know we are aware that this is extremely powerful and diversified tool. So for instance, Cooper proposes whole records of entities that are connected through types feeding shared predicates, but we are going for a <coughs> simpler approach, which is uh, important for us because it's been shown by Kinoshita and um, um, Kojimi Nishima and Daisuke Becky <coughs> four years ago that it's, it's, uh, it matches with, with the presupposed content. And what they show is that uh, if we have 29, like John escaped, what is presupposed a presupposed restriction is that done is, is animate. And so rather than just a you know, a standard interpretation like uh, two argument function, uh, they uh, interpret um, predicate as involving uh, a variable x, which is an individual such that this uh, x is animate. So this is a presupposed information, right? So <coughs> we're going to use the same. Uh, general machinery, but so uh, let's first have a look at uh, some empirical um, reasons for this. So we know that if you have double or two time, uh, these deliver double on set like two parts or two events. And we also know that each element of this uh, double on set is conventionally specified by the argument of the numeral at hand, as well as the argument of measure functions. So if you have double champion, just to repeat, you have <coughs> Uh, what's what's entailed is that there are two disciplines and you have if you have double taxation uh what's entailed is that there are two sub events of taxation okay so given this we propose the following restriction of some, on some atomic quantification and colors correspond to those um, empirical observations so uh, there is a test there is a set 
nice. And this set is a doubleton set, fine. And what we propose is that for each element of this set, <clears throat> some conventionally entailed uh, property holds for those elements. And uh, this property simply follows from the lexical meaning of the sister of the numerical. <clears throat> so for instance, from champion or um, deep frying or whatever you like. And this restriction of on some atomic quantification is encoded <coughs> as a dependent type of variable which is mapped by the uh, measure functions. So let's see how this uh, might work. So take first non-recursive uh, case, so a double champion. Uh, these observations remain the same. So we know that uh, what's entailed by champion is that <coughs> we have the kind of predicate champ of this in R, which is a discipline in which the role of champion is achieved. And we know that there must be uh, two disciplines, right? So if you take double champion, then <clears throat> the core semantics remain as, as um, uh, Martin showed you. So it is a function from role to truth value. Uh, so this role is champion and uh, there are two essential parts of, of this role, but we also add this uh, dependent type uh, in the form of uh, restriction, which says that there is a set, which is a double set, and each element of the set is such that uh, it has a property. One is uh, that uh, <clears throat> this is a discipline one um, uh, for this role, and then another is a different discipline, right? They are not one and the same for the same role. So we have two disciplines, right? This is why it is double time. Okay, so let's now move to those cases in which you at least can have <clears throat> Uh, a recursive interpretation, as in the case of double taxation. Uh, just to remind, we have two interpretations right here, and let's start from the assumption. The assumption goes as follows, that taxation, that lexical meaning of taxation, entails the fact that that kind of function, this kind of property holds, and this property is tax on D in E, which is a number in R being the result of taxation on D in E, right? So, <clears throat> The interpretation uh, goes first, and so double quotation is just a function from <coughs> from an event to the truth value. From so the truth value goes as follows: so it, there is a uh, sum of money uh, which uh, is the input of taxation, and there are two essential parts of this taxation. And here comes the restriction. So it says that there is a set with a doubleton set, and each element of the set is such that one is the sum of money imposed in the first step and then there's another sum of money there's another taxation imposed on the same sum of money on d that's 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 very important on the same sum of money <clears throat> in another step so what we get is uh, first of all two operations of taxations so two essential parts and we have uh, two tax values uh, value one and uh, value two which is computed for the initial sum d and two events of taxation right now, the problem is that given this, there's no way to compute taxation from our already taxed sum. And to get this, we would need uh, this uh, first operation of taxation, giving some uh, number in R, and then use this as an input uh, to another operation of taxation. But then uh, it's crucial that this M would remain both unbound and unrestricted and our uh, computation will collapse, right? And this is exactly the point where it is recursion and not iteration that must uh, uh, come up on the stage. So uh, once again, if we use just this, we would uh, involve iteration, we would just iterate uh, this operation because we would just use the output of the previous step as an input for another. What we need is uh, recursion because it allows uh, this whole machinery to encode one variable in terms of another through the recursive cycle. So rather than taking just tax on D and E given M and then this M as an input to another operation, we get tax on D and uh, in uh, E1 and then tax on tax on D in E1 in E2, right? So here is the recursive step. <clears throat> so to get the recursive reading, everything remains as it uh, was um, in, for, for the non-recursive reading. We have double uh, taxation, which gives you uh, taxation on DNA and two parts of it. And the crucial thing comes here. So uh, this is double set such that uh, for 
two elements of this. One has uh, this property, so it is the value on D in uh, E1. And the second one is the value on the value of taxation of D in E1 in E2. So this is the recursive step, right? So what's the output? The output is that we have uh, two tax values, one computed from the already taxed sum of money. And we have no unbound or unrestricted variables, and neither of these would have been possible without recursion. So uh, now computation is safe. <coughs> now, to show that this does not work just for uh, technical terms, let's move back to this uh, internet. Uh, so, uh, sorry, it was corpus example with double dependency, which is, uh, uh, it, 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 at least it was quite challenging for us at the beginning. So you have this a recursive dependency relation where uh, one country is the dependent of, of Poland is dependent of Czechia, Czechia is the dependent of the emperor, and then by recursion, Poland is the dependent of the emperor. This is this double dependency concerning Poland, right? So we have like, uh, in sum, we have three dependency relations. So uh, <clears throat> what we have to assume is that this dependency uh, entails, this lexical meaning entails the fact that this property holds and this property is that uh, x, uh, the, the, uh, this is uh, independent of x uh, in E, right? So <coughs> uh, let's see how this works. Uh, the computation is one and the same as in the case of taxation. So uh, we get a function from event to truth value saying that there are uh, two individuals uh, for which the dependency holds and there are two essential parts of this dependency. But then uh, the restriction goes here uh, that there is a set which is double transcendent for each element of the set. <clears throat> one is the dependent of X in E1 and another is a dependent of the dependent of X in E1 in E2, right? So here comes the recursive step. Uh, no unbound variables and the computation is safe. So the output <coughs> is like, uh, this that we have three dependency relations, one between X and its dependent, which is step of X and E1, another because this dependent of X1 uh, and its dependent is dependent of the dependent uh, in E2, and the third one, which is by recursion between X and the dependent of the dependent of X uh, in E1 in E2, which is Poland and the emperor, right? With uh, the intermediate uh, state, uh, Czechia, <coughs> feeding the recursive step. And this is <coughs> like a perfect match between empirical observations and uh, formal uh, tool, because we have this counterfactual dependency margin uh, told you about. So uh, the case was just to recall, uh, if we have this double dependency, had Czechia ceased being the emperor's vassal dependent, so would have Poland, right? And know that this is exactly what, what you get here, uh, because had this, so dependent of X, dependent of the emperor in E1, which is Czechia, had this been uh, undefined, so would have this, the dependent of the dependent of X in one, in the end of which gives you Poland. Uh, so uh, we just <coughs> captured this counterfactuality by the fact that had uh, one element feeding recursion been undefined, so we would have uh, the, the, the final step. So let's move to conclusion. So to conclude, uh, so uh, there's the standard assumption in generative linguistics that recursion is the property of a structure building mechanism. So it's syntactic in the narrow sense. And we try to argue that, in fact, uh, recursion is actually not limited to narrow syntax as assumed uh, above, uh, but rather it's a property, in general, a property of um, systems in which you manipulate with symbols. And the, uh, the core empirical argument comes from the novel observation that you can have recursive understanding of double and two times, such as in uh, the phrases in 37 and 38. And, uh, uh, yep. And the consequences of our proposals are that, uh, first of all, we provided uh, a unified account for both uh, non-recursive and recursive understandings of uh, two time and double. And uh, the 
crucial, uh, the crucial technical or theoretical point is that terminal uh, internal recursion emerges in cases where it can save the interpretation from the occurrence of an unbound variable uh, variable that would cause the computational system to crash. And we need to uh, think about recursion as a structural property, as a property of symbolic systems in general, rather than an embedding of potentially infinite uh, depth. And um, another uh, point to consider is that uh, it turns out that there might be very um, curious uh, non-trivial ways in which numer various numerical expressions can individuate objects they uh, they count. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much. We have time for questions, so questions please. Uh, let's start with a question here. Uh, uh, Jimmy? Okay, so, um, uh, so first of all, uh, in your, uh, so it's a, just a uh, clarification of uh, um, uh, in number, uh, example number seven, I think. Nijiu uh, Kaze. So the, for the recursive meaning, uh, you write that E2 is 10% uh, of X minus 10% of X. And I assumed that it was supposed to be X plus 10% of X, right? Uh, so depending on how you understand taxation, right? So if 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 it's income that is taxed, right, then you've already paid pa pay the you know so it's like one tax. So so you have ten one hundred dollars and you paid uh, ten dollars on that amount, and then the you know have you have ninety dollars that are taxed, then it's minus. If if you sell something and you include you know tax into the new price, it would be plus. Depend. It's just. How you understand taxation? Uh, okay, but anyway, so it seems like that's the most uh, common interpretation. I think uh, the uh, taxes, uh, you know, you have uh, tax on already tax price. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, so it, um, yeah, in that case, it will be plus. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the crucial thing is that you cannot get exactly the same input. <clears throat> then, what? However, you understand this. What's What's crucial is that it must be. The output of, 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 of the first operation. Okay. That, that's and, the point. Okay, and regarding uh, number, uh, I mean, uh, your formula in 36. So um, <clears throat> I haven't completely understood uh, the proposal, but so it seems like uh, so I, I'm looking at the, uh, the upper half. And you have, uh, so basically E2 uh, is calculated after, uh, is done after E1 here, but I mean, you, you just have uh, uh, universal quantifiers and the only condition you have is E1 and E2 are distinct. So, yeah, so, because, so yeah, you yeah. have, so you have, so you, have, so you have two events and one event, uh, you know, uh, is recursively applied to the result of the first, but then, I mean, from this formula, it, it, I think it it should also hold if these two events are switched, right? If so they are switched, I, I don't think universal quantifiers. <clears throat> okay, now I mean, this states, right. yeah, yeah. So let me let me clarify this. One. Maybe not, not obvious. So the, the 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 thing is that for uh, both elements of the set is a doubleton, right? <clears throat> it's the, the whole the whole machinery is uh, defined in terms of just uh, three variables. So it's the initial uh, individual uh, with regard to whom we we define dependency, and then two situations, two eventualities, two state of affairs, right? So we have to assume that these are not one, one the same. That's obvious. And then we get here. This this is uh, the dependent of x which means the dependent of the emperor. And the then he's the dependent person. of this dependent. In, in, you can take right. this as a, you know eventuality state of course. But since you have universal quantifiers, it follows that even if you switch those two events, the same, the same uh, you know, uh, pro, uh, the, these predicates should hold, right? So I think you should have an exist, existence of quantifier. Like there's some event E1, uh, oh. of these two things, mm -hmm. and then the other one is dependent on that. I mean, you have that. Does that mm -hmm. would that change much? I'm not sure. 
Yeah, okay. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good, yeah. Because it's, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th these two things are like, uh, you know, incomplete symmetry here, right? Yeah. And also uh, for... Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, and I also have uh, more, uh, another, uh, so, so you have this uh, kind of formula like, uh, uh like 29 or 30 so why do you need to write um two universal quantifiers of for all x for all y and you have to say x and y are the same then uh blah blah, blah. you could just have one a universal yeah, quantifier that's true. For all x. okay i can see it well I, i'm not sure whether this would change much but yeah i mean yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I I I I got it right. Yeah. Perhaps it's I mean existential quantifier would be would be would be enough. Yeah. I mean for this case, the one universal quantifier, I mean. Uh, uh, sorry? For for this case, for 29, I, I what I said is you could just have only one universal quantifier and you don't need to have uh you can just eliminate x. Uh, if yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 yeah, that's 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 true. Perhaps this this is enough. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, Avi. Uh, uh, second. Yeah. Yeah. Avi, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, could you go forward uh, two slides? Oh. Um, in what you shared, I think uh, the slide numbers are different. Oh, no, no, I, 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 one more, uh, uh, the, the next, yeah, yeah, over here. Um, this, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, wouldn't you um, avoid the unbound variable and get the right meaning with um, existentially bounding uh, M? Yes, but you have to do this, that's, that's the point. And and if 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 you wanna have a generalized account, then uh, we, we this is exactly what we don't want because then you would have to <coughs> say that okay in some cases you have yet another binding and in some cases you don't have this, and this is exactly the point because we wanted to propose a general machinery because we have very good reasons for thinking that this uh, semantics for double and two time uh, for cases where you have no recursion at all, like double champion and you know, whatever you like. <coughs> uh, to time taking. Uh, there is no recursion whatsoever. So we wanted to avoid a situation in which we add binding just to get uh, the interpretation we want, uh, especially bearing in mind that this is purely conceptual, right? You don't have any, or at least we can't see any, you know, uh, grammatical mechanism engine uh, standing behind this. So we wanted to propose general semantics and, and it, it is precisely recursion that uh, opens up a path for this. So, right, in so, other ways, so in other ways, we don't want, you know, this is like two semantics for double, so double one without binding, double two with binding, right? Because there's no reason to believe that these are two expressions, rather there's some underspecification and the, and the, and the system is designed in a way to capture both understandings, uh, even though you don't see any formal distinction. And yeah. Right, so, um, uh, it's just that uh, you, you gave uh, the recursion as a way to um, uh, to, uh, to to prevent the unbound uh, variable, and uh, so like as a, as a rescue mechanism. Uh, I, 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 there is also the general mechanism of existential closure of just um, the variables which are unbound; they get existentially bound. Um, if it's already available and it would achieve uh, uh, the same goal that recursion achieves, so maybe it's like a, comp a competitor in that regard. It, it, uh, it, it might be, it might be, but uh, uh, the question is, why to involve, why to, you know, uh, <clears throat> make your machinery 
uh, much more complicated with some tacit assumption saying that, okay, in such cases, there are so, there's this bonding shift and so on and so forth. If you can get this by an incomparably, in, in, in comparative, much, much, much lower price, which is just making use of recursion. That's, that's, that's it. You know, know that what we are proposing is extremely parsimonious. We are proposing very little to get quite much. And that's 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 the that's the trick, you know. Because yes, we are not yes. adding much, we are just making use of the mechanism which is uh which comes for free, in fact. Yeah, so I I, I guess um like uh, um it, um, in my background, I, I'm also used to thinking of existential closure in the same way as coming for free as not being costly. So that's mm. um, uh, it's my background of, uh, yeah. of raising so that I think, Yeah, so I think one, uh, so I'm not sure, entirely sure right now, but I think one you would need to think uh, more about when this existential uh, closure applies, right? Because, so what the, what double does, Right, so at least in this story, it feeds. So it takes, uh, you know, to, to to specify the dependent type, it feeds on the lexical semantics of the of the modified NP or the modified noun, say, right? Okay. So the existential block closure would need, it seems to me, apply already at that level, right? So, and then the question is whether you, you know, it's like what the consequences are, are and whether you want that. So, I mean, so there might be timing right. problems with this respect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, that would be interesting to look at. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's, uh, that's all the time we have. Uh, so thank you very much for a very nice talk.